Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. In today's episode, I want to talk about blood typing and paternity and do some of those who's the father sorts of questions. By the end of this video, you will be able to solve problems like these given the blood types of the mother and the possible father and the baby. Um, you'll be able to figure out if he can possibly be the father. The uh, information that I'm assuming here, you want to check out my solving genetics problems uh, where I talk about probability and the Punnett squares. And then this will rely heavily on the understanding of the ABO system, so ABO inheritance. Uh, I will, of course, link those videos in the down bar below, but let's get right to it. Um, the question of paternity, this is actually a very biologically interesting question. Uh, we're not like fish. Uh, you may have noticed we're not like fish. We're not like frogs. What I mean by that is those critters have external fertilization. And that means that the female lays eggs, and the males, in some manner, will fertilize them. And the male can actually see, oh, look, you know, my sperm over the eggs. This leads to a lot of things, including uh, paternal care, male brooding, which we see in a lot of fish, and things like that. Um, what we have, and what mammals have, is internal fertilization. And when fertilization is hidden, and especially in the case of humans, when the gestation period is very long, this can lead to a lot of problems. You can't see what's going on. So the question of paternity is a very real one. We can actually use blood types not to prove paternity, but to disprove paternity. So if you want to prove that someone's the father, you're going to have to do a DNA test. But you can use blood types to exclude someone from being a possible father. Now, like I always say, you can look up these tables. There are other tables like this for, you know, blood transfusions. People try and memorize these. Please don't. Um, that's, that's what the Penguin Prof is for. So uh, we'll get you to understand what all of this means so you don't have to memorize anything. Uh, again, I'm going to rely on this table, or parts of it actually, which I go through in exhaustive detail in the Donuts and Sprinkles ABO and RH blood type video. So again, if you haven't seen that, check it out first. I'm going to talk about this. So these are the different phenotypes in the ABO system, and these are the genotypes that lead to those phenotypes. And um, this is really what you need in order to do these kinds of problems. So we're going to do three of them. The first one, Jane and John have a baby. I know, it's, 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 I'm so creative sometimes, right? So if Jane is A and John is B and the baby is O, can he be the father? And when I ask these questions, I always ask my students to show all possible genotypes for everybody involved in your answer. So this is kind of the way I recommend that you go about it. You want to list everybody, and you want to list their phenotypes. Now, Jane is A. There are two possible genotypes that will give you the A blood type. You can be homozygous for A. Again, I'm going through this very quickly. That means that both alleles have the information to make A antigens or heterozygous for A. Same thing is true for John for that blood type B. You can be homozygous for B or heterozygous for B. For the baby, the phenotype O, there's only one genotype that'll give you blood type O, and we designate that genotype as two lowercase i's. Now, some people can look at these genotypes and immediately answer the question, and you can see that if the mother is heterozygous for A and the father is heterozygous for B, each of these individuals would have a 50% chance of donating that little i to the baby. And so if you have 50% times 50%, in other words, you get a lowercase i from both parents, you'll have a 25% chance of getting a type O baby if both parents are heterozygous. So you can do it that way. If you prefer the Punnett square, what I'm doing here is I'm putting Jane up at the top if she's heterozygous for A. She actually has to be heterozygous in order to have an O child herself. Uh, and we're putting John heterozygous for B right here. And then you just fill in the Punnett square. So you would expect that this coupling would produce 25% of their offspring would have the AB phenotype, 25% would have B, 25% would have A, and 25% would have O. So again, you get that 25%, and a lot of people find it much easier to fill in the Punnett square just to make sure you don't miss anything. So the answer to the question is 
yes, he could definitely be the father, right? It's that 25% O that you're looking for. Does this prove he's the father? Absolutely not. But he cannot be excluded, so he could be the father. Yay, John. Okay, what about another one? Penny, blood type AB, and Pete, blood type O, have a baby, blood type AB. And Penny says, hey, the baby inherited my blood type, but Pete isn't so sure. Can he be the father? So once again, you want to fill out this little table. We've got the phenotypes of Penny, Pete, and the baby. If Penny is AB, there's only one genotype that'll give her that AB phenotype. So she has to be IA, IB. For Pete, also only one genotype for that O blood type. And the baby is IA, IB. Now, you can hopefully now look at this and see that the baby has to get one allele from each parent. So the mother could have given the baby either the A or the B, but that other allele had to come from someone else. It most certainly did not come from Pete. So he cannot be the father. If you want to see the Punnett square, this is what it would look like. You would get 50% of the offspring being type A and 50% of the offspring being type B between Penny and Pete. There is no way this couple could produce an AB child. So that is bad news for Pete. He cannot be the father. Okay, the third one is the one I showed you at the beginning, and this is actually a very interesting story. It does have some historical significance. Joan was blood type A and gave birth to a daughter who was type B. There was a mystery man who was type O, and the question is, of course, can he be the father? This was a story that was big news in the mid-1940s. Joan was Joan Barry. She was an aspiring American actress. She gave birth to a baby, there was no photo available, named Carol Ann, and the mystery man was none other than Charlie Chaplin, the big star of silent films. She claimed that he was the father, there was a big court case over this, and blood types were used in Charlie Chaplin's defense. So let's do it. If Joan is A, there's two ways she can be A, homozygous or heterozygous for A. Charlie was type O, Carol Ann was type B. She could be homozygous for B or heterozygous for B. Now you should see at this point that in order for Joan to be the mother of this baby, she has to be heterozygous, okay? Because what she donated was this little I. That means that Carol Ann had to be heterozygous for B and she had to get this B from someone else, not from Charlie. So here is the Punnett square for everybody involved. Charlie and Joan can only produce offspring that are either type A or type O. Charlie was not the father of this child. Interestingly enough, the jury wasn't sold on this blood typing business. It was just too new, and they saw Charlie as this big, rich Hollywood star, and actually Joan won the case. And Charlie Chaplin spent the rest of his life paying for a child that was not his. How little things change, right? Nothing is permanent in this wicked world, he said, not even our troubles. He was pretty remarkable and said one of my favorite quotes, a day without laughter is a day wasted. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons, like, share, and subscribe. Join me on Facebook, follow on Twitter. Good luck.